Welcome to Galactic Historian. This is a series where I break down the lore of sci-fi universes. If you enjoy this, please like the video and be sure to leave any other questions you have in the comments below on your way out. I'm continuing our little story time series with another tale from the Star Citizen universe. In this episode, we're going to talk about the closest the human Xi'an Cold War ever came to becoming a hot one, the standoff in Hador. Our story begins in the early years of the United Empire of Earth. Ever since contact with the Xi'an, the UPE, and eventually the UEE, had been concerned with the possibility of all-out war. After the First Tavaran War, now Imperator Ivar Mezer feared that a war with the technologically superior Xi'an would be apocalyptic. So he made it a major goal to secure the border, increase the military, and rapidly develop military technology at all costs. The border between the human and Xi'an space was known as the Perry Line, after Admiral Armistead Perry, who introduced the strategy just before the First Tavaran War. The strategy called for all of the systems bordering Xi'an space to be used as military staging grounds or buffer zones, not allowing any civilian settlement or development of these systems. The goal was to create a heavily armed border, constantly patrolled by ships with listening posts strung along the entire systems to keep watch for a Xi'an attack. To this end, Ivor Mezer was concerned that these systems were not being developed fast enough or with the proper tech needed to monitor Xi'an activity. He feared that the aliens would use the weakened state of humanity after their long war with the Tavaran to hit them when they were weak. As a result, Mezer poured billions into developing a new military long-range scanner, codenamed TKL-2900. He boasted that this represented a new era of scanning technology, however it failed to live up to these claims in testing. Because of the failures, he would turn to engineer Martha Agrawal, one of his trusted loyalists, to help him save the project. She guaranteed that with a few slight changes, she could get the project back on schedule. Ivor Mezer trusted her word so much that he ignored the calls for further testing once she had finished her modifications and instead deployed the first TKL-2900 array into the system of Hador the modern-day Xi'an system of Yamun, near its jump point with the Baker system. Shortly after the deployment of TKL-2900, a massive explosion ripped through the Hador system. The detonation was so massive it lit up every sensor in the system. This caused a UEE naval patrol of fighters and patrol craft to investigate the cause. When the patrol arrived at the site of the explosion, they found Xi'an ships scanning a debris field of what was once TKL-2900. Not knowing if the Xi'an ships were responsible for the explosion, they did not attack, but demanded the Xi'an retreat from the area. While the Xi'an did not open fire in response, they ignored all hails and continued to scan. Finally, the leader of the patrol, Lieutenant Commander Polina Balmont, fired warning shots across the Xi'an ships. The Xi'an ships then instantly withdrew as Balmont and her ships set up a perimeter to block the Xi'an's return and wait for further patrols to arrive. Lieutenant Commander Balmont then took her ship and jumped back to the Baker system to inform Admiral Horesh, the leader of the local UEE naval battle group, that TKL-2900 had exploded and Xi'an ships were spotted at the scene. While he passed the message along to the High Command, the Admiral did not wait for a response. He ordered that someone find Martha Growl and for his entire fleet to converge on the jump point between Baker and Hador. The Admiral's flagship, the UES Kinley, was the first of his fleet to arrive and sent out scouts of his own to help determine the situation beyond the debris field. The Admiral was concerned that the warning shots, though justified, had escalated the situation, as the scouts soon came back reporting a massive buildup of Xi'an ships closing in on the system. The Admiral needed answers, but also knew that the longer they stayed in Hador, the more likely the situation would spiral out of control. Luckily, his fleet was beginning to show up at the site, along with a growl. When she first saw the site, she claimed that the only explanation was that the Xi'an attacked their sensor, a clear act of war. Admiral Horesh wasn't as positive and ordered a systematic grid search of the entire debris field. This would take time, however, time he did not have. Luckily for him, his fleet was the first to have an experimental ship 
which was still being put through its paces for deployment in the Perry Line, the new Aegis Nautilus mine layer. The Admiral ordered the ship to mine the entrance of the system from Xi'an space, and the crew quickly went to work. Their goal was not to block the jump point, but use mines to force the Xi'an ships down a path optimal for the UEE fleet protecting the debris field. Unfortunately for the crew of the Nautilus, they had not finished laying their mines when a massive Xi'an fleet emerged from the jump point. However, the fleet did not attack the mine layer, but simply held back and observed it, curious about this new ship they had never seen before. A Xi'an ship, one the Navy believes was the ship with the best scanning tech, shadowed the mine layer from a safe distance as it finished deploying its mines. The Admiral ordered it back to Baker to resupply with more mines, and as it broke away from the Xi'an fleet, its tail did not follow. The two fleets would then stand off in a tense showdown as the small UEE ships scanned the debris field for more information and any surviving data storage devices that could be found. Finally, the ships finished their search and found two data recorders intact. As Martha Growl began analyzing the data, the Admiral ordered a swift withdrawal back to the UEE side of the jump point. The Xi'an did not follow, however, they were picked up by another local listening beacon, sending out their own ships into the debris field and scanning the area before the fleet also returned to Xi'an space. Initially, Mezer was furious at the Admiral for his unsanctioned use of the Nautilus. However, while a growl insisted it was a Xi'an attack that destroyed TKL-2900, the data showed that it was a fault in the experimental reactor that caused the explosion. Soon after, Ivor Mezer came to realize that his trusted engineer was not up to the task and that Admiral Horesh had made the right call. As a growl fell out of favor with the first Mezer, the Admiral would rise to become the supreme commander of all forces on the Perry Line for his decisive actions and cool-headed response to the situation. When asked about the incident later in his life, the Admiral said that the Hadour standoff was the highlight of his military career, stating, one of the toughest decisions a commander can make is when to walk away from a fight. Thus is the tale of one of the most precarious moments in human history, when the fate of trillions of humans and Xi'an hung on the decisions of one Admiral to resist his own warrior instincts and back away. I want to thank you for watching, and I want to thank my Patreons on screen now for helping me make this content. If you too want to help out, as little as $5 a month goes a long way to helping me make this content. Did you enjoy the story? Interested in hearing more tales from the verse? Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below, and as always, remember, Exastoria Ad Astra.